Hi, I'm Judy Buss, the children's minister at Foothills. Well, summer's just about here. Are you ready? I know I sure am. And I'm so excited for what's in store the next few months. We will be talking all summer long about making waves. Do you know God is doing something in you to change the world around you? Just like the waves of the ocean, every time a follower of Jesus takes an action to show others who God is, we set off a wave of actions continuing outward, changing the world for the better. Every month we'll discover something new about God's character and how we can reflect or respond to that character because we are created in God's image. When we demonstrate these characteristics, we show the world what God is like. All summer long, we'll be diving into God's Word and learning more about the fruits of the Spirit. Galatians 5.22-23 says this, But the fruit the Holy Spirit produces is love, joy, and peace. It is being patient, kind, and good. It is being faithful and gentle and having control of oneself. Wow, all those things sound like what I want in my life. In fact, that is one of our memory verses this whole summer. I hope you take time to memorize it. When we put our trust in Jesus, we receive the Holy Spirit to help us, guide us, and empower us to do the work Jesus calls us to do. The Holy Spirit produces fruit that shows up in how we share God's love with others. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, we can make waves and change the world around us. I'm excited to see how God is working in you and me to make a difference in our homes, our neighborhoods, and even our sports teams. Remember, just like the waves continue to move and intersect, so do our lives. Let's be full of good fruit all summer. Ooh, speaking of good fruit, I can't wait for some watermelon. And now for this week's videos.
know what time it is. It's time to hear a story full of wonder. There's so much fun we'll have learning together. So let's go down, go down to the clubhouse with Ollie and his friends. Let's go down, down, down to the clubhouse where wonder never ends at the Wonder Clubhouse. Me and you at the Wonder Clubhouse. Me and you. Hi friends, I'm Hayden, and last week I got to go to the beach. And I think some of it came home with me. Raise your hand if you like to play in the water. Me too. My friends and I played and splashed in the water all day. We looked around the beach and found some really cool things like this really cool piece of driftwood. and so many shells. But the most fun thing we found was really cool painted rocks. Some people painted them and hid them in places on the beach. Do you know what's on this rock? Shout it out if you know. One, two, three. A heart, yes, a heart means love. I love hearing the waves. I love playing ball. I love eating lollipops. There's so many things to love. Who? Who? It's Ollie. Hello, Hayden. Who? Who? Found some treasures at the beach, did you? Oh, hi, Ollie. Someone painted this cool heart rock and it reminds me of all the things I love. Love is important. It's true. I know the biggest love ever for you. Listen to this story. Just follow me through. Who? Who? Follow me through. Follow me through. Aisha, welcome to my cupcake food truck. Do you want to see what I made today? Ta-da! <laughs> I call them my heart full of love cupcakes. They've got hearts on top and yummy red frosting, and when you take a bite, they are full of red and pink heart sprinkles. They are so fun! <laughs> they go with today's story about why we should have a heart full of love for others. If you're ready for the story, on the count of three, yell, tell me a story. One, two, three, tell me a story. Today's true story from the Bible starts with God. Do you know that God loves you so much? It's true. Stretch out your arms as far as you can. Yes, stretch really far. <laughs> Good! God loves you bigger than your arms can stretch. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> okay, you can put them down now. Because God loves us so much, He gave us the best gift ever. God gave us His Son, Jesus, to be our friend forever. Jesus was born on the very first Christmas. Did Jesus stay a little baby? No! Jesus grew up to do amazing things and show us how God wants us to live and how to love others. No matter where Jesus went or what he was doing, Jesus stopped to show others that he loved them. One day, Jesus stopped to talk to a man named Zacchaeus, even though Zacchaeus had made lots of bad choices. Jesus loved Zacchaeus no matter what. Then, another day, Jesus had been teaching all day, and he wanted to take a rest. But Jesus loved the crowd and wanted to help them, so he kept teaching them instead of going away. There was also a time when one of Jesus' friends, Peter, told people that he didn't know Jesus and wasn't friends with him. How would you feel if someone said they weren't your friend? 
I would feel sad and it would probably be hard to forgive them. But Jesus did forgive Peter. Jesus loved Peter and forgave him for telling people they weren't friends. Jesus is an amazing friend and God sent him to show us how to love everyone. Jesus taught us to stop and listen to our friends. Jesus taught us to help our friends. Jesus taught us to forgive our friends. When we stop to listen, help, and forgive, we are loving like Jesus taught us to. Jesus can help us love everyone. Jesus can help us do everything. Did you like the story? If you did, give it two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. <laughs> hey there, Ollie. Tell me, who can help you do everything? Jesus can help me do everything. Yes, it's true. Now, let's hear it from you. Tell me, who can help you do everything? Jesus can help me do everything. That's the truth, friends. You better believe it. See you next time. Bye. So there's your story, and it's all true. God loves us so much. He gave Jesus so we can choose love in all we do. Thanks, Ollie. Goodbye to you. Hoo, hoo. Wow, God loves us so much that he gave us Jesus to be our friend forever. Jesus can help me choose to love and love can change the world. I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you did, say got it. Get it? Good. Hey, one way I can choose love is by FaceTime my grandma. I can tell her I love her and show her my cool rocks. See you next time. I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Philippians 4.13 I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Philippians 4.13 Have you ever cannonballed into the pool? Whoa! When your body hits the water, you make an explosive splash. Anyone nearby, get soaked. In fact, the force of your impact sends ripples in every direction until they fill the whole pool. When you make waves, you change things. And that's not just true inside the pool. You can make waves everywhere you go instead of a wild jump. Whee! You change things with your attitude, with the way you respond to tough situations. You make waves when you invite the kid everyone thinks is different to your birthday party. And when you choose to cheer for your teammates from the bench, even with a sprained ankle. Goal! You make waves when you help two squabbling friends remember the things they love about each other. And when you take a deep breath and smile as your little brother asks you to play the happy little train game for the 24th time. Come on! It's not always easy to choose love, joy, peace, and patience. 
But with the power of God's Spirit, you can dive in and make waves. God's love inside you can change the world around you, and others will see God at work in you. That's why making waves is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Ah! everybody, my name is Haley, and I don't know about you, but I am so ready for this season. What's your favorite thing to do over the summer? Is it going to the beach? Sand castles and ocean waves. Radical, dude. Or maybe you prefer water skiing on the lake. How about some whitewater rafting? Woo! Woo! Oh, seven, 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 make it. Oh, it was fun. Let's do it again. many water related activities to choose from, which is a good thing because all summer long, we're going to be learning how to make waves because what you do today can change the world around you. When you make waves, that means you make an impact. See the boat in the water? It's not really moving, is it? But watch what happens when I make a wave. You see that impact? We can make waves too, but our waves aren't made with water. Our waves are made by showing things like joy, patience, or peace. And 
In today's story, we'll learn a good reason why we should make a big wave of love that will impact the world around us. Here comes a big one! Woo! Radical, dude! I'll see you soon. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 John, chapter 4, verses 9 through 13. In the beginning, there was nothing. Nothing but God. But God's heart was overflowing with love. So God poured it out in a mind-blowing wave of creation. Glorious light, rolling waters, arching sky, furling plants, swooping birds, creeping and racing and climbing animals. Then God reached into the dirt and shaped something brand new, a person. God formed the very first man and breathed life into him. Oh, hello. I feel like I need a... something, a name. That's it. God shaped the very first woman, too. You can call me Eve. I'm Adam. People were created in God's very own image to reflect God's love to the whole world. But God also created people free to make their own choices. Adam and Eve chose to break the one law God made to keep them safe. They shattered their perfect friendship with God. Sin and brokenness entered the world. Family members turned against each other. It's not fair. Leave me alone. Fear and anger and pain crept in. But God didn't walk away. God's love was bigger than anything else. He already had a plan to bring people back into relationship, to make things right again. And he started by calling one person, Abraham. Abram. Yes, Lord? Go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. All nations on earth will be blessed because of you. Yes, Lord. Though Abraham and his wife Sarah were very old, they had no children, but they followed God for 20 years into the unknown, and at last God gave them a miraculous child. Isaac. God has given laughter to me. Through that one child, Isaac, God's love spread out like a wave, forming an entire nation, the tribes of Israel. The Israelites blew hot and cold. Sometimes they would follow God with all their hearts and oftentimes they would forget. Still filled with deep love, God sent them leaders like Moses. God says, let my people go. And David. The Lord is my shepherd. He gives me everything I need. God made waves through women like Esther and Ruth. Where you go, I'll go. Over and over, God's people promised to obey. And over and over, they turned away. At last, God allowed them to be taken into captivity. But even here, God never left them. God sent prophets to speak words of truth, prophets who hinted at a rescuer who would come to save God's people once and for all so they'd never have to be apart from God again. Malachi wrote, Bethlehem Ephrathah, out of you will come for me a ruler over Israel. Zechariah proclaimed, City of Zion, be full of joy. See, your king comes to you. He always does what is right. He has won the victory. Isaiah promised, The people who are now living in darkness will see a great light. A child will be born to us. A son will be given to us. He will rule over us. His rule will be based on what is fair and right. It will last forever. The Lord's great love will make sure that happens. But following the prophets for hundreds of years, no word from God was recorded. It seemed as if God's love was silent, but the real wave was coming. At exactly the right moment in time, God sent 
Jesus. God's very own son was born as a baby to an ordinary girl in an ordinary town. Angels declared the news. May glory be given to God in the highest heaven, and may peace be given to those he is pleased with on earth. Jesus gave the world a picture of what God looks like. He showed what it truly means to love God and to love others. And then he gave up his own life for the sake of his friends, his enemies, for us. Jesus took all our brokenness on himself, and he died. But God's love can never be stopped. God created the greatest wave of all when he raised Jesus back to life. In Jesus, every wrong thing is made right. Every broken piece is made whole. God's love through Jesus comes out in a wave that's not just for a single group of people or any one specific time. God's love floods the earth for all people, for all time. John, one of Jesus' closest followers, wrote about it like this. Here's how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world. He sent him so we could receive life through him. Here's what love is. It's not that we loved God. It is that he loved us and sent his son to give his life to pay for our sins. Oh, dear friends, since God loved us this much, we should also love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us. His love is made complete in us. Here's how we know that we are joined to him and he to us. He has given us his Holy Spirit. God's love is flowing all around us right now. And through the power of God's Spirit, we too can spread that bottomless love to the world around us. So here's the good news. God loves you. God loved you enough to send Jesus to the world. And you don't have to do anything to earn that love. In fact, Jesus showed how great his love was by giving his life for your sins. And when you believe in Jesus, not only do you have a relationship with God that lasts forever, but God gives you the Holy Spirit to help you through life. If God loves you that much, you can make waves by showing love to others. Think of it this way. This is God. God pours his love into you. Then you can take that love and pour it into other people. John wrote, no one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us. Maybe that means that other people can see God through us when we show them love. But love doesn't have to be a tidal wave. Something that seems small can have a huge impact. You can love someone by helping them without being asked. You can love someone by giving up your turn. Sometimes all you have to do to show love is just spend time with someone. When you choose to love people the way God loves you, you can make waves. And you may not see it, but you can bet that love will spread from you to other people to even more people. So here's the one thing to remember today. Love others because God loves you. You could change the world one person at a time. <sighs> Why am I so thirsty right now?
Have you ever cannonballed into the pool? Whoa! When your body hits the water, you make an explosive splash. Anyone nearby gets soaked. In fact, the force of your impact sends ripples in every direction until they fill the whole pool. When you make waves, you change things. And that's not just true inside the pool. You can make waves everywhere you go instead of a wild jump. You change things with your attitude, with the way you respond to tough situations. You make waves when you invite the kid everyone thinks is different to your birthday party. And when you choose to cheer for your teammates from the bench, even with a sprained ankle. Goal! You make waves when you help two squabbling friends remember the things they love about each other. And when you take a deep breath and smile as your little brother asks you to play the happy little train game for the 24th time. Come on! It's not always easy to choose love, joy, peace, and patience. But with the power of God's spirit, you can dive in and make waves. God's love inside you can change the world around you, and others will see God at work in you. That's why making waves is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Ah! Hey, buddy, you ready to, wow. 
Yeah, I'm almost ready. I just, I'm just finishing up the sunscreen. You think you got enough? <laughs> I, I thought so. Do you think I need more? No, you're good. No, okay. I just gotta get, oh. <laughs> gotta get this hand. Oh, yeah. Sorry. So, oh. Oops. <laughs> gotta get this hand. It's a little slippery. Wait, 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 wait. You want me to help um, you? Yeah, do you mind? Here. Oh, yeah, okay, do you mind? okay, okay, yeah. <clears throat> all right. Oops. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, is it? Yeah. All right, here we go. All right. Here we go. <laughs> all right, I'm ready. Uh, I'm, you want me to carry something? Uh, yeah, uh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here. Yeah. Here, take this. Okay, yeah. Oh. Oops. Here you go. Great. Sorry. Oh, well, that's... Sorry. I, no, sorry. I, I, I got this one. <laughs> okay. Thanks. It's my hands are slippery. I, I had no shot. You know what? I think I can handle it. Yeah. All right, so we're we're leaving. Yeah. Let's All go. Right. Great. Woo! Did you put sunscreen on the bottom of your feet? Yeah. Hello, everyone. I'm Brandon. And I'm John. And welcome to the, the So and So Show. Show. Tell them what month it is, John. Oh, it's June. That's right. And John loves June. June, John, June, June, John, Juni, Johnny, Johnny, June, it's June! Yow! Whoa there. What, too much? Yeah. Okay. But uh, seriously, I do love June. Uh, summer is definitely here. Beach, catching the waves, uh, pool parties, playing in sprinklers. All great things, but yeah. you know what I love about summer? What? Well, here in America, we call it our national pastime. Hot dog eating contest! No. Pizza eating contest! Still, no. Our okay. national pastime. Pie eating contest. No, it has nothing to do with food. Baseball! Baseball is our national pastime? Yes, and here to talk about it is someone who knows stuff. Yeah! Hey, come on in! Welcome, welcome, welcome! <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yes. Take a seat. Uh, who are you and what do you know? Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> yeah, my name is uh, Jerry. I'm a baseball umpire. Oh, well, hey! Hey! What? Hey! <laughs> yeah, I get that a lot. Uh, but you didn't even do anything. Well, it's a pretty unlovable job. Huh. And who is that person dressed up like a llama who came in here? <sighs> that's, uh, that's Lorenzo. He's the mascot. Kind of rude. Well, he just keeps the fans laughing, uh, even if it's, you know, sometimes at my expense. It's all in good fun. Huh. Yeah, but it still must be hard to get booed all the time. Well, sure. I mean, okay, here's the deal. If I make a good call, it never gets noticed. But if I make a bad call or even a close call that maybe doesn't go your team's way, well, then some people can be, well, they can say some pretty mean things. Like what? Yeah, well, just watch this. <clears throat> uh -huh. Strike three! Yeah! Hey! <laughs> okay, 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 okay. No, that's 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 a pretty good one. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> so, so if people can be so mean to you, why do you want to be an umpire? Well, I I love the game. I mean, I love the players. I love the fans. I I even love Lorenzo. Lorenzo. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Come here, buddy. Oh. <laughs> oh, what a guy. Oh, well, Lorenzo. yeah. I have to admit, Jerry, you have an incredible attitude about this. Yeah, I don't know if I could do it. Yeah, I don't need. Whoa. Go. You're out of here! What? I call him like I, I call him like I see him, Lorenzo. What, what, what are you? Are you kidding? You were out by a mile. What are you doing? What? What? Glasses? I don't need glasses! 
Well, yes, I do need glasses because I'm wearing them right now because without them, I can't see anything. Plenty of people need glasses. That's why I can see you are out because I'm wearing glasses. What? Uh, oh, I'm not crying. I'm not crying. No, I'm not crying at all. I'm not crying. <laughs> I'm not crying. <laughs> Man, how do you do it? Uh, I, I I think it's important to remember that everyone at the game plays a part, mm -hmm. right? I mean, like uh, the the popcorn sellers there to keep the fans fed. The players are there to compete, to entertain. The fans are there to cheer, to have fun, and to see some amazing plays. Mm -hmm. And I'm there to make sure the game is played fair. I mean, deep down, I think that's really what everyone wants. We all play a part to show how much we care about the game hmm. and about each other. Whoa! <laughs> it, it's kind of like the wave, right? If, if only a handful of people did it, it would just be, well, it would just be random people standing up and down. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for the demonstration, uh, Lorenzo. <laughs> but, but when everyone plays a part. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it. Whoa! <laughs> it makes something pretty cool. Yeah, that's exactly it. You know what? Thanks for coming on the show today, Jerry. Of course. Hey. Uh, um, oh, wait. Um, so right here. Hey, I've got a couple tickets to the game later. If you oh, guys wow. want to go. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Yeah. You got your thing. Hey, take care. All right. Bye. bye. He's out of here. He is. <laughs> what? What? No, no. He literally left. He's gone. He's really out of here. Don't do that. That's my ad. What are you? I, I, we're not even playing a game right now. It's Bible story time with Kellen. What, why are you kicking dirt? This is a wood floor. <laughs> Kellen. What is up, good people? Not much. You got a story for us today? Absolutely. Well, then take it away. Our story today comes from 1 John chapter 4, verses 9 through 13, and it tells us a little bit about God's love. But really, the story starts way before that, near the beginning. God created the world and it was good, but something happened between God and humans that separated us. People broke God's rules. Now, thankfully, God had a plan to fix that broken relationship. God did that by sending us Jesus. And that's what John was writing about. He wrote, here is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world. He sent him so we could receive life through him. Here is what love is. It is not that we loved God. It is that he loved us and sent his son to give his life to pay for our sins. That, my friends, is something to cheer about. And to demonstrate that, here are my good friends, Jackie and Dee Dee, the cheer squad. Hey, hey Kellen. Kellen! You ready, Dee Dee? Oh, I'm ready. Oh, I got a question for you. Okay, what's that? Do you know how much God loves us? Oh, it's so much! We know, we know, our God, our God, loves us like what? Our door, our door to God, to God, will never be shut. We know, we know, our God, our God, gave us the one. His one and only, only, one and only son. Woo! Yeah! God gave us his one and only son, Jesus, who gave his life to bring us back to God. When we trust in Jesus, we can have a relationship with God that lasts forever. That's how much God loves us. But listen to what John wrote next. Dear friends, since God loved us this much, we should also love one another. You ladies got a cheer for that? Huh? Oh, yeah, you know we do, Kellen. Hey, Jackie, what's that, Dee Dee? You know, just sometimes it's hard to care for others. Oh, what are we gonna do about that? Jackie, you already know. L-O-V-E, that's what we must do. Because of what God's done, we should love you too. L-O-V-E, that's what we must do. When we love each other, our hearts are made new. L-O-V-E, that's right, the word is love. We can show the world we care just like the Lord above. L-O-V-E. That's what we must do. Because of what God has done, we 
should love you too. Woo! I love that. If God loved us so much by giving us Jesus, then we can find a way to love one another. Here's the last part. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us. His love is made complete in us. Here's how we know that we are joined to him and he to us. He has given us his Holy Spirit. John wrote that no one has ever seen God, but when God's Spirit lives in us, we're able to show God's love to others. What you got for that, cheer squad? We got something really good, Kellen. You tell him, sis. You ready to bring this home, Dee Dee? Oh, I thought you never asked. Let's do this. It's true, God's Spirit reminds you and me. God lives inside us, setting us free. It's true, God's Spirit reminds you and me. When we love one another, God's love is complete. When God sent Jesus, his love came to stay. Now his spirit helps us to love the same way. It's true, God's spirit reminds you and me. When we love one another, God's love is complete. Woo! Amazing. Thanks, cheer squad. Yeah, thanks. That was great. One big way God showed his love for us was by sending Jesus. And that's why we get to show God's love when we care for others. And the more we show God's love, the more his love will spread, creating a wave of love. Whoa! <laughs> Thanks, Kellen. See you next time. Wouldn't miss it. Later. You know, love is an easy thing to talk about. Oh, yeah. I, I say I love a lot of things, like uh, pizza and my Dryerland collection and soccer. But what does it mean to really love others? Uh, well, I think God gave us a pretty good example. So reveal the question. Mm. How can you love others like God does? Yes. Ah, uh, that's, that's good and uh, tough, but yeah, good. Yeah, because God is he's God. <laughs> yeah. So he's, Ah, uh, oh, but, but, but remember, we have God's Spirit living inside us. Yeah, and the Holy Spirit can help us to love like God. Right, right, right. You, you can love someone by doing something kind for them. Yeah, you can love someone by giving up something that you want. You can show love to people who are different from you or even people who maybe get on your nerves a little bit. Yeah, talk about it together. How can you love others like God? Well, hey, that's all the time we have for today. Oh, that's right, because we, we have to get to the baseball game. That's right. We're going to go cheer on Jerry the umpire. Right. So we'll see you next time on the So It's O Show. Whoa. Whoa. That was a reverse <laughs> wave. I, well, that no, was not crazy. if we were going that way. Uh, okay. Oh, I mean, yeah. Boy, Another I mean, great call, Jerry. Was way beyond the base. No. After the ball. That's supposed to be kind of Oh, that's right. Hey, good effort. Yeah. You know what? Oh, the one thing I know about baseball fans is they just like effort, not accuracy. You know what's foul? These prices for popcorn, but, yeah. but not your calls. Yeah, and the pigeons on the third deck, they're foul. <laughs> <laughs>